One of the most prominent inventions we take for granted every day is window tint. Window tint is often a form of vinyl, dye, or film used to block some percentage of the light from getting through your windows. This is very common in commercial buildings as well as cars. But when did it show up? Is it legal to have window tints? And what the heck was Lexus thinking in the late 90s? All of that and more in today's video essay. The idea of tints spans back to the medieval times. Stained glass, while beautiful to look at, also limited the amount of light to pass through, making rooms and buildings more pleasant in warmer climates. But we're here to talk cars, silly! Windows on cars started popping up around the late 1910s as a way to shield the passengers from the elements. However, tint wouldn't show up until about the 1940s. Pioneered on the 1940 Mercury Romango, the technology was put on pause during the Second World War. Well after our soldiers came home, interest in tint returned, and in the 1950s a common example was the 1958 Chevy Impala. This was called Easy Eye, which was the genericization name for tinted LOF glass offered from General Motors. LOF glass was sourced from the Libby Owens Ford Company, who supplied glass to many brands in and outside of the automotive world from 1818 to 1986. Fun fact, LOF had the contract for all 4.5 million Ford Model A windows. Take that, Paul Shin. Here's a transcript from the ad for Easy Glass in 1958. Roll the window test? Just roll an Easy Eye safety plate glass window down halfway. You'll feel the sun burning your forehead while the rest of your face stays shady cool. Easy Eye has a special chemical composition that filters out a high percentage of hot solar radiation and gives the safety glass a pleasant blue green tint. Keeps the heat from pouring on you, the next best thing to air conditioning. Air conditioning was invented around the same time but was a very, very expensive option. So a lot of people started opting to use window tint. However, the tint was also expensive, and not many people actually bought into it. However, big advancements were made in the 1960s by the 3M company. 3M is an adhesive manufacturer, and if you've ever used pretty much any kind of tape in your life, you've used a 3M product or an imitation of one. They developed the adhesive polyester film with a metallic coating that worked to filter sunlight through the windows. In 1969, they also created a clear film that helps glass stay together in the event of an accident. This technology is in every single car produced today and is more commonly referred to as safety glass. The big the biggest advancement of the 3M film was that it was now readily available and more affordable than ever before. However, tint still wasn't commonplace in cars. Window louvers served a similar purpose throughout the 60s and 70s, which I have a full video about on my channel if you're interested in window louvers. However, the technology of tint began to hit its stride in the early 1980s with the rise of commercial consumerism and a focus on fame and fortune. Limousines began utilizing tinted window film to keep their occupants anonymous. This of course filtered into consumer vehicles where tint saw a rise in popularity. However, the issue was visibility. As hard as it was to see inside, it was also hard to see out at night. To fix this, hybrid film was developed. It contained a mix of dyed film and metal shavings to help reflect the light out while maintaining some kind of visibility. This worked well throughout the 1980s and 1990s. Famously, the 1990 Corvette ZR1 had a tinted windshield that was supposed to reflect police radar. And it did! But it also raised a huge issue. Under a decade later, when GPS and cell phones became popular, the signal from those devices couldn't penetrate the tint, much like the police radar. So, if you wanted tinted windows and to make a phone call, you had to crack the window. Today, there are several kinds of tint. 
Carbon film appears matte and won't fade over time. Ceramic is usually the most expensive, but offers the most protection without interfering with radio or GPS signals. Dyed film, which is the most affordable, also has the shelf life of a naked peach. And metalized film, which contains metal shavings to reflect the light out, is a cheap alternative, but will also block any signals entering or leaving the vehicle. In order to learn how modern window tint is applied, I stopped by Exotic Window Tint in Buffalo Grove, Illinois. To start, each vehicle is mapped out on special software to plot out the size and shape of the windows. A special cutting machine then cuts the window tint to the exact shape of each window. The tint is then placed on the wall so it can be properly separated from the rest of the film. The tint specialist then places protective coverings over the car as well as removes any trim that may be in the way. The window is then cleaned thoroughly inside and out, often multiple times. The tint specialist then brings the cut piece of tint over to the desired window and measures it up on the outside. Some water is sprayed on the inside of the window to help with aligning of the tint. A plastic cover is then removed and the tint is brought to the inside of the window. Window tint is applied on the inside to protect it from any debris that may graze the window. This step is the most time consuming measuring up each corner. Once centered, a squeegee is used to remove the water under the film, leaving nothing but the adhesive between it and the window. Heat is also applied to help solidify the bond. Finally, the specialist removes any protective equipment, replaces any trim that was removed, and moves on to the next window. Most cars come from the factory with some kind of tint these days, however plenty of base model cars still come with zero at all. That said, there are laws against tint in some areas, so let's talk about the law. With the rise of tints in the 1980s, lawmakers quickly realized the issue with tint on cars, so legislation was quickly put in place to limit tint thickness. This is commonly measured in percentage, where the number represents the amount of light that is able to pass through the glass. A completely clear window with no tint would technically be considered 100%. Common percentages are 50%, 35%, and 20%, where limo tint often hovers around the 5% mark. Laws are different by each state, often with hotter states having more relaxed tint laws when northern colder states seem to have stricter laws. Just take a look at the difference between Arizona, a hot state, and Alaska, a cold state. My home state of Illinois does have a way around this, now offering WT license plates which allow for dark tint on vehicles whose owners have a medical condition that requires it. Leave a comment on what your local laws are. So what was the deal with Lexus? How was this mirror style tint ever allowed? This part of the video is all hearsay. I can't seem to find a solid source, but here's what I've pieced together through various forum posts from the era. Lexus wanted to build a luxury SUV and give it mirrored privacy tint. This had to be okayed by the Department of Transportation before they could sell the vehicle, so they sent out an inspector to the RX factory. Either the inspector wasn't thorough enough, or the test didn't go properly, but one way or another, the tint got passed by the DOT as fully legal. However, a few years Years later, the DOT realized that there must have been some kind of mistake and walked back their ruling on the tint. The older cars would be grandfathered into the law and remain legal, but any vehicles after 2003 were no longer allowed to run the mirrored tint. That's why the second generation RX never got it. Tint is one of the most important parts of a car for me. When it comes to defending against the hot summer sun, Tinted windows are a must, but now you know a little bit more about the darkened automotive windows. I also want to give a huge shout out to Exotic Window Tint in Buffalo Grove for allowing me to shadow them in their shop for a day. It was really cool learning the experience of tint. Please check them out. They are absolutely wonderful. They do very professional jobs. The whole way that the shop is run is very professional. It's not just some cash under the table business. They're very legit and they also do PPF. So if you're looking for something like that in Northern Illinois, I cannot recommend them enough. They have been wonderful and a huge 
helped this video.